All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and I'm super excited to talk about this topic today, and that's drop sets. So, are drop sets effective? Do they matter? Are they worth doing? Um, a lot of questions on that. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this video today was because Saturday on my Instagram, I did a set of pendulum squats where I had a bunch of plates on there. I did four reps. I pulled a little bit of weight off. I did another four reps, etc. And I did 16 total reps and all 16 reps are really hard. And a couple of people messaged me and said, um, just basically how many sets of drop sets do you do? Is it something that's valuable? Should I do it? Is there any, you know, is there any science behind it? And those are all really good questions. So I wanted to share my thoughts with you today on it. So I always like to have kind of a, a balanced approach when I look at um, training philosophy. I like to look at my experience. What have I seen over 34 years of training? And I like to look at the science behind uh, what's out there, specifically guys like Brad Schoenfeld and people like that. Um, and, and I like to talk to my friends that are very good at interpreting science, certainly a lot better than me, people like Scott Stevenson. So I like to kind of look at both angles. And I remember a year or two ago, um, this question was coming up and people were talking about some studies. I listed four on here that you can look up, uh, kind of draw your own conclusions. But there were a lot of studies and some of them were, were pretty worthless. Uh, they weren't really drop sets, they were, people would take weight off, rest a minute, do another set, that's not a drop set. The drop set I'm talking about is you do a certain amount of weight for a given number of reps, you immediately pull some weight off, usually it's 20 to 30% of the load, and you continue to go, and you can do two, three, whatever you wanna do. That's what I would call a drop set, just so we're clear on what a drop set is, because some of the studies, that's not how they did it. But there are four studies that kinda of get a lot of press. There was one, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right, so forgive me if I'm not. Uh, Angleri or Angiri 2017, where they used the leg press, leg extensions. Basically what they found was the, the drop sets weren't more effective than straight sets. If you looked at it, they were pretty equal, all things considered. There was another one here, Ozaki 2018. They took, um, they took a group, they actually had three groups, but two of the groups, one of them had 80% of their one rep max that they took to failure for three sets. And then, they, and then they did, they compared that to then a drop set where there were two drops. So the volume was equated. Um, again, the results are really similar. There, there wasn't a real big difference between them. Um, there's another one, Fink 2017. Brad Schoenfeld was a part of that as well. Um, and that one was interesting. It had tricep push downs and, and the group that did the drop set, the size was actually uh, improved more with the drop set, but the strength was improved more with the straight sets. So you could make an argument either way on that one. I mean, if you're getting stronger and stronger, you potentially, potentially could be bigger. So you saw some kind of some positive stuff with drop with the drop set there. Um, and then this other one, I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Go to go to 2004, where they had people do five sets, and they had another group do five sets plus they tacked on a drop set. The group that tacked on the drop set had more gains, but I don't necessarily consider that study effective or, or properly done either because they did more volume. So if maybe you would have made this six sets, um, it would have been a little bit better equated. So there's, there's more volume in this one. It supported drop sets. It said they're very effective. I think the message that I get from science is drop sets aren't a bad thing. It's just hard to say how much if they're better than straight sets. So I think the, the message is mixed and you'll, hear, you'll see studies where it says they're not better. It doesn't mean they're bad. Um, so that's kind of what the science says. It's not really, and you can look all these up, it's not real definitive. It shows, in, some, in one of these studies, the subjects were untrained, so they, both groups got results. Well, of course, they were untrained. So I don't think there's enough evidence to say drop sets are overwhelmingly positive or overwhelmingly negative. So when I get in a situation like that, again, I go back to experience and I even bring it back to the basic, basic principles of what makes a muscle grow. And first of all, to make a muscle grow, it's pretty simple. You activate a muscle fiber, you load a muscle fiber, you create mechanical tension and you exhaust the muscle fibers. Like that's a form of overload. So those are the things that have to be in place. Um, so let's talk about for Let's talk about four things as well. 
size. So size refers to Hinneman's principle, the size principle. So the heavier weight you're lifting, the more muscle fibers will be caught into action. I think that's common sense, but it's a good basic that you have to understand. And the reason why I bring that up is because it reflects to get more activation out of your muscle fibers, you need a load that creates that. Now, I would also say this. One thing I don't have up here, but I think it's important, is mind-muscle connection. If you, as you train through the years, there's probably muscle groups that you train now that you have a better mind-muscle connection with, and you can probably even do less and get more out of it because you're so efficient now. And I think as your mind-muscle connection increases, that's another great way to um, activate muscle fibers. You know, I think about times when I struggled with certain development of certain areas, doing more heavy weight and doing more sets wasn't necessarily the answer because it just didn't feel right, all right? So I think that mind-muscle connection is really important, and then you have to have enough uh, weight to actually call, call those fibers into action. Now, force is another, is another one you have to talk about. Um, there's this force velocity relationship. I'm gonna keep it real simple for you because that's what I do on this channel. I keep everything real simple. If you have a weight that's so light, it's flying out of your hand. You have good activation, but you're not loading the muscle fibers. That doesn't create growth. Let's compare a squat and a vertical jump, for example. When you do a vertical leap and you explode, you actually have a ton of activation to do that, to produce velocity, to produce a fast contraction. It, it requires a lot of activation, but you're not loading the fibers. That's why just standing around jumping won't give you really big legs. So you have to actually use enough weight where the contraction is slower. And when the weight is so heavy, the contraction is slower, there's a lot of scientific things that happen that create mechanical tension. You get these muscle, these thin filaments, they call them actin and myosin, they kind of grab together, they give you the ability to produce a lot of force, create a lot of strength. But the, the bottom line is that's creating mechanical tension, that's loading the fibers. So you have to have a weight that loads the fibers. Certainly straight sets, heavy sets, cover one and two. So if you're doing straight sets, you're good to go there. And then length tension, that's more of a range of motion discussion. Um, basically, ranges of motion can do two different things. A, a, a long range of motion can create uh, muscle growth actually longitudinally, um, lengthwise. The shorter ranges of motion can sometimes produce this lateral the thickness in the muscle fiber. I don't really want to get into that, but, but that's important. But now, here's the kicker, and this is where drop sets come into play, fatigue. So you not only have to activate a fiber, not only do you have to load a fiber, you have to fatigue the fibers, okay? This is why you see so many power lifters that are incredibly strong, but they're not really big. Do you think they're activating and they're producing a lot of force? Absolutely they are. You got these 180 pound dudes deadlifting six, 700 pounds. I think there's some doing 800 pounds now. They're not real big, okay? But they're clearly doing one and two. So I was reading, um, you know, somebody said the other day, well, I don't really like to do drop sets because um, 20, 20 to 30 percent drop in load. It's not a heavy load anymore, so I don't think it's effective. Well, a guy who says that clearly doesn't understand what's really happening during a drop set. Take, for example, the, the, the pendulum squat I did. So after I did the amount of weight that I did for four reps and I pulled a little weight off, did that suddenly get easy? No, it was still hard. It was still very, very difficult. So from a muscle fiber perspective, it was producing as much force as it could. It's producing as much force as it can, okay? So that's maximal force production. That wasn't a light load. You're just a little fatigued, okay? So the nice thing about fatigue is you can get into this whole time under tension discussion, okay? That's a little misleading because uh, I just wanna make a couple, couple clarifications here. If you just sit here and curl a really light weight for three minutes, I don't really consider that a lot of time under tension. What I consider time under tension is the hard reps. That's the tension that matters. And that's why using this little 20% of your one rep max isn't gonna produce any significant growth once you get past the beginning stage. And then, um, so PP there, that's peripheral fatigue. So you get this fatigue in your muscle groups. As muscle fibers tire, they call in more fibers. Pretty soon you have full activation, the same thing you get um, up here, but then you actually fatigue fibers as you go. So you know, we say we go to failure, 
when we can't do any more reps of good form, but are we really a failure? No, we could actually lighten the weight up and we can continue to go. So you're, you haven't really fatigued the muscle fiber. And this is where I think the beauty of drop sets can come in theoretically. You're loading, the, you're, you're activating, you're loading, and now you're, you're exhausting the fibers. That's a form of overload, okay? That's why I like, personally, that's why I think there's value there. Now, there's also some negatives. They create a lot of muscle damage. They can be really tough. So if you're just mindlessly adding tons of drop sets, you're going to have a hard time recovering. You're creating a ton of fatigue. So you have to use these wisely. For example, when I'm doing a drop set, it'll typically be on my third exercise, maybe my fourth. So you're looking at one or two of these sets for the entire workout. It's not four sets like this. It's not multiple in the same exercise. So you got to be very strategic on how you use these. Not only that, look down here, exercise selection. You got to be careful what exercise you're using a drop set on. If you're using it on a bench press or a squat, for example, something that requires precision technically, you can get hurt. Your form goes, next thing you know, you're, you hurt yourself. Whereas if you're locked into, you know, like a, like a pendulum squat or a leg press or a curl machine or a chest press machine, you know, when you get into these machines or this equipment that allows you to do it safely, now you can do this safely and you can really tax the muscle. So, um, so from my perspective, I think drop sets do have value, particularly when it comes to fatiguing the muscle fiber. Remember, it's not just activating and loading the fiber. Those are critical, but that's not the whole story. And this is why the guys who just preach, I'm going to get stronger and I'm, or I'm just going to add more reps, that's good, but there's a dead end there, okay? There's a dead end or else we would all bench 1,000 or we'd be benching 500 for sets of 30. You and I know that you can't get infinitely stronger forever. You can't add reps to the bar forever. I do think it's the good basic part of a training program. But when I hear people say things like drop sets don't work and blah, 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 they, they clearly don't have another way. See, this allows you to create overload in a different way, in an intelligent way. And what you'll notice with a lot of the guys who just preach, you just have to get stronger and you have to add more reps is they're hurt a lot. Oh, my hip hurts, my shoulder hurts. You know, uh, my pec, my pec, I injured my pec. These guys are injured all the time because they don't know another way to create overload. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to be smart. I want you to continue to focus on your straight sets, on, on uh, getting stronger and adding more reps. But I want you to also realize as you get more advanced, then you're going to need things like this. These things are going to help cre create overload and fatigue in a different way. You just have to be really smart how you use them. So... That's my perspective. Um, I hope it helps. I love talking about these high intensity techniques. We're also going to cover cluster sets, partials. We're going to cover, we're going to cover everything. Um, so double-edged sword here. Very effective if you're wise when you use them. They could also be bad if you don't use them intelligently. So that's my thought on drop sets. I hope you enjoy. We'll see you next time.